Okay, this is MWF State Finals Freestyle Day 2. This is Jacob Adams in heavyweight for Cadet. Going out against the kid that he lost to the day before in Greco. Jacob is in the blue. You see the white thing around his head right here as he's pummeling in for position up top. And uh, going for that arm. Going for that Russian arm drag right here, which I love. If he just gets his head up right there. Oh, as he did, the guy dropped levels. That was beautiful from the other guy. Right back into our pummel, though, and lifting in. All he's going to do is step in there and lift a little bit more. Goes for the hand locks. The guy locks his elbows like he's supposed to do, which is great. Goes to initiate. Get this. That should have gone. It went out of bounds. It could have gone 3-2. It could have gone 2-2. Could have gone whatever because of the fact that that guy initiated the throw, and Jacob just somehow kicked the heck through kept great position, knew what he was supposed to do, and was ready. Right back to that Russian arm, his head is in. I want his head up as he throws that up and over and then changes levels. Right now though, he's in, he's in good position, just needs to step in more with his knee and lift with those underhooks, lock him up. Again, there's been a great exchange so far. Got to go for the headlock though, let's see what Jacob does. Coming back to rush it, slips it right behind. All he's gotta do is bring him down. All he has to do is bring him down. Boom, 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 boom. Puts the pressure on, brings him down for the one. Looks like the ref could have gone two to three. It just depends on how that kid landed. I didn't have the angle right here. I apologize. This is Coach Tisdale, uh, Jacob's coach, with the commentary of this match. This is basically his finals match for um, fifth and sixth in the state, believe it or not, for, again, freestyle, uh, MWF. Boom, look at that. Boom. Change levels right back in like a rubber band snap and had him. Has to keep his head up here. A lot of people don't realize that. It's not just Greco and freestyle. They can call him for caution at will. They don't call it barely ever, but he has to keep his head up no matter what, whether he's taller or shorter, and then step that knee in there and lock it. Kid goes for another throw again, likes to come back over to that headlock, and look at this. You're not going to see it for another second or two, but Jacob again, again, somehow manages to come all the way around, move his feet quick, not only get the point right here as he goes for a seat belt and sit, he's got to grab, he's got to isolate that elbow right there. You see the kid grabs his leg, luckily he bails out, gives him one point, kid's on top, no big deal. He has 10, 15 seconds, they're out of bounds, they're going to come back up. Jacob has to get that elbow, isolate that elbow so that when he goes to set, he has to first break the kid's back, let him feel the extent on his back, and then he wants to go. Goes for a shot off the whistle, can't get it, kid comes around, that's another one point. Not as much of a big deal, but here we go. Boom. Caught him between, I think, his gut on bottom and gets uh, two points for the near fall, which was awesome. Held him there to get another one point for a near fall down on bottom. And we're already into the second period, and that quick. We, don't, we didn't even get to see what happened there. I think it was his gut. Right now we're back up to neutral position. Um, I want to say the score is probably like 3-3, three to three, something like that for Jacob. Guy goes to launch again. Boom. Caught. Now, the ref right here is not counting near fall, but was counting between one to two points for Jacob for coming around behind and how that kid landed. Again, Jacob countered that headlock. This kid has to be open right now. Right now he's closed. He has to be open. So the ref's probably cautioning him. But Jacob's going for a trademark series right there from that front headlock series and setting up either direction. Decides to go all the way around and capture the one point. Goes for a choke roll right there, but ran out of time, which is beautiful. In here, hand fighting, controlling the head, which was beautiful. You see him reach up there for the head. Block on the inside collar tie right there, so he's not coming in any closer to us. He slips it. Hand fighting. Needs to get his head up more. It's going to be awkward ever to do that because you want to go head-to-head -head with these people like a bull or like a ram in, in combat. But basically, we need to keep our head up so we don't get any cautions and we get them all cautioned out. He's hand fighting. He's following him. He's stalking him. He's in the center of the circle. Boom, slipped it. Staying in the center of that circle, stalking him, which is beautiful. He just needs to step that knee in the center as he goes to drag that or goes to grab that arm for that Russian drag or comes inside. You see him, he straight, keeps trying to grab those to drag them. I, he's getting a lot of that in this match, which is awesome. Boom, kid goes for a slam headlock again. Like this kid is a huge headlock strategist or something and boom look at Jacob look at Jacob grab him inside inside staying in center of the circle hanging on tight boom here we go it looks like we're third period right now again hand fighting boom standing up straighter must have been listening to the coach or something and in good grackle position even though we're freestyling right here we're still pretty good he just needs to step that knee in there boom slips that headlock again for about the fourth time now right here boom see this come all the way up and circle behind like he's a lightweight I don't know how he's moving so much quicker in this match, but he has that gut range super, super, super tight. 
and I bet the ref was watching it. I bet she was almost giving him that two. Goes right for that seatbelt again. Almost like a choke roll, but right there it's more seatbelt. He has to isolate that arm so when he goes to sit, they cannot grab his leg. It's very difficult for people to understand that if you can't isolate that arm, he is going to grab your leg on the way through and could have you. Very dangerous move then all of a sudden, especially for a heavyweight. It's harder for them to move with that much weight down on bottom. Boom, nice drag again. Boom, nice Russian drag again. Right now he's not circling very well. We need to get him back to the circle. Let's see how he does here to center off. Kid grabs him. Grabs outside and launch is going out of bounds. Now here's the deal on this one. This one could have been luck. Could have been I wasn't watching their feet. Could have been anything. But this kid hit, popped this throw. And I think he popped it on the line or out of bounds. And I don't think he was given any points, which is fine. Because he caught us. And now we're back to the center of the circle, and I don't think uh, any points were given. And at, at, at most, they gave that kid one point for going out of bounds with Jacob. Same thing, though, here. Boom, going out of bounds, going for the headlock again. This kid's just going headlock crazy, which is the most dangerous move in wrestling, is to catch us with a headlock. And Jacob slips it for about the fifth time. Ongoing count right now. Going out of bounds, it should have been, again, Jacob one point, though. Last one out of bounds would have been the other kid. As you tell, I'm trying to get the angle here as I'm coaching and just ecstatic how awesome Jacob is wrestling again in the blue uh, in one of his, basically his finals match for the Michigan Wrestling Federation State Finals in Battle Creek at McCombie Place Hotel to the kid that he lost the day before in Greco. Kid goes for the throw, boom. Jacob catches him again. Scores the points. Um, we can't see if he's scoring one or two points every time in these matches or on these, these exchanges. Um, but again, between that one and the last one, I'd say he, he was either he was capturing the one no matter what, but he might have captured two, and either one of those, how that kid landed. If he lands on his side to his butt, to his back, then obviously we're getting two to three. All right, back up, boom, third period. Going to notice a couple things coming up here between how they're wrestling. Again, Jacob right there controlling that head. I like that. He has to get his head up, boom. Changes levels, kid goes headlock again. He locks him. This is the sixth slip. Sixth time he slipped him. Look at him right here. He could pop him straight over his head as a heavyweight. That was just ungodly. Kid comes right back around again for a headlock. Seventh time, Jacob slips it again. See the thing come off top of his head that was protecting him. It was actually a problem that they were going to allow him to wrestle with the thing that's on his head. It's, uh, it's not ringworm, but it's something else. Looking up. This could be the end right here. I've seen his brother walk in, and look at this. Look at the great sportsmanship. Jacob right back up on his feet, checking the score, exhausted, but didn't look like it in the match at all. It worked super, super hard. This is, to me, we can have to get this match because, and there's the hand raising victory, because the fact that this was the best match I've ever seen him wrestle. I had to have this match. Good sportsmanship. You see me over here just clapping my, my butt off as the coach, Coach Tisdale. As Jacob comes over to say good luck to the other coach, congratulations, and the other coach obviously was a good sport. We congratulated Mono and I, the other kid over here. Jacob's going to sign in for that win. You see the other guy, Corey, over here that was uh, second in the state that day. Um, and Jacob's going to come over for the ceremonial hug. Of course, I'm in tears right now. I'm, I'm bawling. Cannot believe it. And boom, there's the ceremonial first hug. And, um, and congratulations.